A lot of times traders come to me and they say, Nick, I'm currently in a big losing position on GBP, USD or gold or the Euro. And they say, Nick, what should I do next? I have no idea. I'm in a big drawdown. What can I do next to get myself out of this problem? And if you find yourself in this situation, I'm sorry to tell you that you've already made a big mistake, which is not planning your trade. If you have a situation where you are in a big drawdown or you have a big problem in terms of your trading account, you probably took positions without a proper plan in place to handle when things would go right or wrong. In today's video, we are going to talk very specifically about things to consider doing before you even open your trade or even before you even open your trading account. As the new year comes into play, a lot of times people have this big idea of changing their trading in the new year. And in today's video, I'm gonna actually give you some practical ways to do so and to actually prepare and to change the mindset, whether it's the beginning of the year when you're watching this video or the middle of the year or whatever. If you wanna change your trading, here are some things that you can think about before you open your next trade to start uh, improving the consistency, the discipline, and maybe even your trading in general. Let's go ahead and dive into it right now. Hey traders, welcome back to the channel. Thanks very much for joining me for another video here. If you're new here and you like Forex or you're learning about it or you're trying to improve as a trader, we talk all about Forex here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe down below if you're new and give this video a thumbs up if it's helpful to you. We're talking about things to consider before you actually take a trade. Now this is a big one because again, a lot of times people come to me and they say, Nick, I'm in a big drawdown and, and things are really bad. What do I do? Do you think this market will go back up? Do you think it will go down? People are asking me to weigh in on their situation as if I know exactly what's going to happen next. Little word to the wise, whether you're a new trader or you're an experienced trader and you're looking at somebody who, uh, quote unquote, is consistently profitable, it doesn't mean they know where the market's going next. They purely are having you know a, a plan in place and they're sticking to that plan and they are long term being consistently profitable. So you can't look to somebody else to tell you, well, what should I do if you're in a big drawdown, um, asking them where they think the market will go next because they might not know perfectly either, right? A lot of times being consistent doesn't know doesn't mean knowing where the market's going. It means simply executing on a strategy that you've mastered and practiced over and over again, right? So when you're in this situation, if you have found yourself in a big drawdown like this and you're lost and you're not sure what to do, the first thing you need to do is you need to acknowledge that, okay, you're trading without a plan. If you find yourself not knowing what to do, this is going to be the first thing I'm gonna say that you need to do before you trade, which is plan, okay? You need to have a plan in place before every single trade that you take. Now, what do I mean by having a plan? Well, having a plan basically means that you need to be able to know, okay, well, you need to know your entries, obviously, but this is the other thing is people focus so much on when do I get into the market, uh, but then they don't pay attention to some of the most important things in trading, which is risk management, how do you manage your emotions and your psychology, right? So having a plan is one thing, but next we need to know, well, when are we going to get into the market? Next, with that entry, we need to say position sizing, right? We'll put position sizing, right? Having the right position size is very, very important because again, those people who say, you know, Nick, I'm in a big drawdown, I'm in a big trouble, what do I do? They are likely over leveraged, right? So having a plan will help you stick to a concept where you're not gonna over leverage your account, meaning you keep those position sizes reasonable to your account, right? And then finally, we need to talk also about the exit, right? What are we going to do in the case that we are wrong? And what are we going to do in the case that we're right? Now, I will say that more important than when you're right is what are you going to do when you're wrong? Again, so many traders get caught up because they refuse to be wrong. They don't wanna be wrong in the market because they don't wanna lose even a small amount of money. This is a problematic way of thinking when it comes to the markets because the markets are not going to do what you want all the time and the best traders are the ones who can handle their losses and accept when they're wrong relatively quickly and then let those winners kind of ride out or play out in their favor, okay? So if you have a plan, you need to have your 
entries defined, but you also need to have your exits defined. Are you going to use a hard stop out, a stop loss level that's gonna get you out of the trade and cut the loss? Are you going to close at a max drawdown level, right? If your account goes down by, let's say 30, 40%, you cut the trade and you're just out and you say, you know what? That's just gonna be the way I'm gonna get out, right? You have to have some sort of exit criteria because again, if you let it get too far, if you have this huge situation where you are massively drawn down and you have no idea where the market's going next, you have no plan and you are just crossing your fingers and hoping that your account will come back, that's gonna be a really dangerous way to play the game because even if the market does come back, if you don't change the way you're thinking, you're just gonna get yourself into another situation like this and maybe next time it doesn't go so well and you end up blowing your entire account and losing all your money. None of this, this is not going to make you successful in trading Forex. You must, in my opinion, trade with a plan that has a proper entry, exit, position sizing uh, model to it. Now that's kind of the technicals, that's kind of the mechanical side of your strategy, but there's also another component that you need to think about before you take a trade. That's what today's video is about. We're talking about ways to improve the way you're trading. <clears throat> before you actually execute your trade. So there's another side of your trading that is not just purely technical, which is equally as important, but a lot of times traders are not as interested to talk about. Again, when people are drawn down like this and they have no plan and they're terrified and they're, they're you know, Nick, what am I gonna do? My account is drawn down crazy. Um, they also have no psychological discipline or plan in place to help, you know, sit, you know, situations like this, right? This is going to happen. You're going to have drawdowns when it comes to trading. Now, the size of your drawdowns and how you handle them, that's what makes a trader either a good trader versus a very poor trader, right? Now, we need to have a psychological plan, okay? Um, Now we need to have a plan to manage our emotions and our psychology, okay? So this is very, very important. And again, a lot of traders don't wanna talk about it. But if you are down, you need to have plans uh, to handle this sort of situation. What are you going to do when things go right? Are you going to close out the trade really quickly or are you gonna let that trade run? It's very important to at least have a plan for your wins and losses right? Not only planning for your winners, right? Because everybody wants to talk about, well, I'm going to take profit here and I'm going to make money if it does this, right? But understanding that you need to plan your losses as well, okay? So you're planning your wins, you're planning your losses, um, but there's a component to this that is also emotional. What am I going to do if I lose? Am I going to step away from the chart, right? So if, let's say that we have a loss. We'll handle the losses first, okay? If we have a loss, right? Let's say that we take, uh, let's say we're day trading, right? Two losses in a day, in a day, um, then we're done, right? No more trading for the day. We just close the trades. We're all done. Okay. That might be a good rule for you. You have to, again, find what is comfortable to you and find the style that fits your uh, personality. That's very, very important, right? So that might be one thing to do. Um, maybe another thing that you psychologically manage when talking about a loss is how am I going to handle um, if I'm in a multiple loss string, right? So let's say I take five trades, a loss in a row. What am I going to do there? Well, maybe you decide, okay, in that case, I take three days off from trading, right? Th something like this. This is a plan that you need to have in place because if you make it up on the fly, you're going to probably make emotional decisions. Now, emotional decisions do not usually end up well for traders. Making a decision purely off of your emotions is usually going to end you losing more money, right? This can lead to things like revenge trading, which means that you try and make your position sizes very big to try and catch up or get back what you lost from the market. That is a very quick way to lose a lot more money, right? A lot of times the biggest losses happen, happen when people, they get really frustrated that they're losing and they say, you know what? I'm gonna go all in and I'm gonna make that money back. This market is gonna give me back my money, right? That's what people do. Um, and then it turns going from two, two losses in a day to maybe 10 losses in a day and they're getting progressively worse and more damage to the account, right? So it's very important when you are planning for this sort of thing. If you're asking somebody, Nick, what do I do in this situation? You're too 
too far gone. You don't have a plan. You don't have uh, anything that's going to tell you what to do next. And if you're looking to others to tell you what to do, then you've already made the mistake of trading without a plan. Okay, so now we also need to talk about the wins. What are you going to do if you're winning, right? Because people make mistakes here as well, believe it or not. It's very psychologically easy to take a win, right? The market moves in your favor. You feel like you're you're the best. You feel like you're a great trader um, and you close out a profit and you feel like you know, you're know you the king or the queen of the world, right? Well, this can be damaging too because this can lead to arrogance, right? <clears throat> You need to make uh, make sure that if you're going to be trading, right? If you're going to be trading and you have winners, you need to have a plan for those winners so that arrogance does not get in the way, right? So we need to stop the arrogance. So what this actually means is you need to test this for yourself. Let me tell you um, something that I do personally if I have a string of winners or things really go in my favor. Now in October and in December, um, we had some really rock star uh, months. Inside the VIP team, I share all of my trades in details as well uh, as my analysis, right? So you can check that out if you're interested. There's a link down below in the description. But um, one thing that I found is that as I started to win more and more, uh, I mean, we literally had like 10 wins in a row. We were just we were just kicking it, right? And that happens to traders of all levels, right? So if you're a winning trader or you're a losing trader, you have winning streaks. And managing these winners, guys, is just as important as managing the losses, okay? You can't let arrogance get in the way and destroy your trading performance. So what I personally will do is my plan would call for if I take X number of wins in a row, let's say I take 10, 10 wins in a row or five wins in a row, the next trades I reduce my position sizes. Now, I want you guys to focus on this for a moment because a lot of traders are gonna do the opposite. So when a lot of traders start having a big string of success, what do they do? They double their position sizes. So if things are going well, right, they start increasing their position sizes thinking that, well, I'm indestructible, I'm invincible, I'm gonna keep going, right? And the arrogance creeps in and this is where people make some really big mistakes. And by increasing their position sizes massively, sometimes they can cause themselves some really bad situations because they open themselves up to huge drawdowns, they get too arrogant, their positions are really big, they refuse to take losses, this can't possibly go against me, right? These are the sorts of thoughts that as you've been in the market for longer and longer, you will experience these. These are the voices in your head um, that traders experience. I experience them even to this day after years of trading in the markets. This doesn't go away. It's how you handle this that's going to determine whether or not you are long-term successful at this or if you are a losing trader who cannot handle um, wins or losses effectively. You need to be able to handle both your wins and your losses like a professional would. How would a professional do it? Well, they wouldn't let it influence um, their approach. They should be very methodical, be very logical and analytical when looking at the markets rather than letting your emotions and, and your kind of your the voices in your head dictate how you trade. So before you take a trade, you need to have a plan for all of this, right? So my personal recommendation when I'm looking at the markets, my opinion is to write out physically. I like to take a notebook. You can check out one of the videos here um, that I've got on writing out. Actually, I've got two videos, but I'll put one up there um, on writing out your trading plan. And I share my personal plan, which includes a psychological and a technical perspective or entry style and exit style, right? So definitely very important in my opinion to write that out and and to have that even on your desk, I've got it here behind me on the bookshelf. I like to keep my trading plan close so that if I'm ever in a situation where I don't know what to do next, well, you know what? I've planned for this. I have a plan and I can put it, I can literally pull it out of the bookshelf, take a look at it and say, okay, you know what? In this situation, my plan calls for me to do X or to do Y, right? It's very, very important, guys, that you should not be trading uh, without a plan. If you don't have a plan, I would say that's the first thing you need to do is get yourself a plan, stop trading without one, because um, that's a, a losing game. You're never going to, to be long-term successful in this, um, at least I've never seen it, just by placing random trades and having no plan for exits or plans for entries or emotional psychology plans, right? It's very, very important. So guys, I hope you got something out of this video. Make sure you subscribe down below if this was helpful to you. Give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you next time.